Hello everyone, welcome to our special techno channel. In the previous sessions, we taught how to publish different data types through various resources. Next, we will explore further aspects related to the GeoServer software. In this session, we will discuss the challenges and tricks that you may come across when working with GeoServer software. If you want to know more details about it, watch the rest of these videos. Reproject CRS as a starting point, let's publish a shapefile. In the left-hand panel, navigate to Source section from Data menu, then click on Add New Store. Select Shapefile. Then select Project Workspace and enter Reproject underline SDR as the source name in the Data Source Name field. Click on the Browse button. Then navigate to the directory where your shapefile is located. Save button to create the data store. Here you can configure various settings for your layer, such as the coordinate reference system or CRS, bonding boxes, and styling options. Scroll down to coordinate reference system section. The bonding boxes of the layer could not be calculated by GeoSever because it doesn't support the Lambert conformal conic projection as you see on the screen. To resolve this issue, we need to reproject the CRS. In Joe server, you can use the SRS handling and declare the SRS in layer configuration to reproject layers. Here is how you can do it. In the declared SRS field, click on the Find button. Then enter the CRS code corresponding to your layer's data in the search box, for example, 4326. It's important to ensure that Joe server has the necessary CRS information available in its configuration. If the desired target CRS is not available, you may need to add it to Joe server by importing the CRS definition or enabling the required CRS plugins. In the SRS handling section, use reproject native to declared field, specify the target CRS to which you want to reproject the layer. In the bounding boxes section, click on compute from data and compute from native bounds to check new bounding boxes after reprojection. Click Save button to apply the chains. Then navigate to Layers Preview section and click on the Open Layers link to preview it. We use the Reproject CRS functionality in Show Server to convert the coordinate systems for data integration, standardization, visualization, analysis, and web mapping. It ensures consistency and accuracy, avoids mismatches, and guarantees compatibility with client applications. Reload Feature Types In Show Server, the Reload Feature Types feature is used to refresh the schema and metadata of a layer without restarting the entire server. When you make changes to the structure or attributes of the layer's data source, such as adding or removing columns, modifying data types, or altering the primary key, the reload feature types functionality allows you to apply those changes without requiring a server restart. At first, setting a new field to the lens layer in QGIS before using the reload feature types feature. the layer preview section and click the open layers link to preview the lens. Select one of the features to view its descriptive information. As you see on the screen, the attributes information are not shown properly. Now to use the reload feature types feature in Joe Server to update the layers schema and metadata, follow these steps. Select the lens layer you wish to update from the Layers section and click on its name to access its settings. On the Layers settings page, scroll down to the end of the page. You will find the Reload Feature Types button. Click on it to initiate the reload process. Once the reload process is complete, Gel Server will update the Layers schema and metadata based on the changes made to the underlying data source.
You can review the updated information to ensure that it reflects the desired modifications. It's important to note that the availability and visibility of the reload feature types button may depend on the type of data source being used for the layer. Remember that the reload feature types functionality only updates the schema and metadata of the layer. If there are any changes to the styling, labeling, or other layer configurations, you will need to modify those settings separately. Output formats in GeoServer Different formats in GeoServer can be previewed in the layer preview section. You can switch between different formats from the All Formats drop down menu. WMS formats include GeoTIFF, JPEG, KML, Open Layers, PDF, PNG, and SVG. For WFS formats, options include CSV, GML, GeoJSON, KML, and Shapefile. To retrieve these formats using GeoServer, follow these steps. Navigate to Layer Preview section from Data menu. Enter parcels in the search box, then press Enter. You can see different formats of WMS and WFS services in the All Formats column. To get the layer data in GeoJSON format, scroll down and choose GeoJSON from the WFS group. Now from the address bar section, you can see these parameters. URL is equal localhost colon ADAD slash GeoServer slash project slash OWS. Service is equal WFS. Version is equal 100. Request is equal get feature. Type name is equal project column parcels. Max features is equal 50. Note that you can increase the maximum number of features. Output format is equal application slash JSON. Also, to obtain data in Shapefile format, you can choose this option from the WFS group. Copy the link and paste it into the new tab. Then increase the maximum number of features. into the QJS software. Remember that the URL parameters vary according to the specific layer and server configuration. You can explore other formats for practice. Isolated workspace. An isolated workspace in Joe server is independent and separate from other workspaces. It allows you to organize and manage data in a segregated manner. The contents within these workspaces, such as layers, styles, and other resources, are only accessible and searchable within associated virtual services. As a result, isolated workspaces keep contents separate from global documents and prevents global services from accessing it. This segregation can be useful when you want to have distinct and independent sets of data or when you need to provide access control and permissions specific to that workspace. Note that these restrictions don't apply to the REST API. Isolated workspaces can reuse the namespace already used by another workspace, but these resources can only be accessed through virtual services of that workspace. Multiple workspaces can have the same namespace in Joe server, but only if one of them is non-isolated. Additionally, two non-isolated workspaces cannot share the same namespace. Now let's create an isolated workspace and publish two layers, roads and hospitals. Once the isolated workspace is created, you can start adding data stores, publishing layers, and performing other operations within this workspace without affecting other workspaces in Joe's server.
An image on the screen displays two workspaces. Project and Project 2 that use the same namespace and several layers contained by them. Remember that Project 2 is the isolated workspace. Consider these WFSK feature requests. URL is equal localhost colon ADAD slash show server slash OWS. Service is equal WFS. Version is equal 100. Request is equal get feature. And type name is equal roads. The first request is targeting WFS global service and requesting roads. This request will use roads contained by workspace project. The second request is targeting project to workspace WFS virtual service. Roads belonging to workspace project 2 will be used. Request 3 and 4 will use roads belonging to workspace respectively project and project 2. The last request with fail saying that the feature type was not found, isolated workspaces content is not visible globally. Upgrade the job server version. Imagine you have created numerous layers and styles in Joe Server, and your aim is to improve the software version while preserving the configuration and data directory. To update the version of Joe Server, you can follow these general steps. Backup the data directory and always do a full backup of Joe Server folder before starting to upgrade Joe Server. If your server is currently running, stop it before proceeding with the update and deploy the old version of your server. So navigate to localhost colon ADAD and click on manager app button. Enter username and password for Apache Tomcat, then click on the stop and undeploy buttons associated with the Joe server. Visit the official Joe Server website from joeserver.org to download the latest stable version of Joe Server. Once the new version of Joe Server is downloaded, extract the contents of the archive file to temporary location on your system. Copy the new version of joeserver.bar file to the Tomcat's web apps directory. Then back to the manager app page and press start button. Wait a moment to start the new version after press stop button.
Replace and override the data directory from the old Joe server backup file with the data folder in the new version. If you have installed any additional plugins or extension in your previous version of Joe server, make sure to reinstall them in the new version. Once you have completed all the necessary steps, stop and start the Apache Tomcat and verify that Joe server is functioning correctly in the updated version. Remember to test your updated Joe server installation completely to ensure that all your desired functionality is working as expected. In this session, we taught you some challenges and tricks that you may come across when working with Joe Server software. It's our pleasure that you subscribe to our channel and watch the videos. Also, if you would like to know more information around the introducing the styling raster layers in Joe Server, we recommend you to watch the suggested video. Have a good time!